All right, let's take a look at the Zodiac. Um, this will be short and sweet, but I do want to go through um, a little bit more detail on the Zodiac signs and uh, let you see if yours is what you thought it was after some uh, newfound information. And uh, if you um, had a change, um, well, then I guess you learned something new. And if it stayed the same, always good to double check. So let us begin. We take a look at even what Zodiac is or, or you know, just a definition for it. Um, a lot of times they're referred to as your birth sign or your sun sign. Basically, the uh, Zodiac, it's this band that we see over here towards the right. And a lot of those groups of stars, you know, like Scorpio or Libra or Taurus or Pisces, probably sound kind of familiar. Um, but it's a band of constellations or, you know, groups of stars, ast excuse me, asterisms, that uh, the sun appears to move through. So this is as viewed from Earth. You know, again, big picture. Keep in mind that the sun's stationary and we're making our trip around the sun, revolving. That's uh, our orbit. But uh, we're talking about the ecliptic here, as in the using that term for the path the sun appears to make as viewed from Earth. So the sun moves through or is going to appear to be in different groups of stars throughout the course of the year or throughout our course around the sun. It works out to where you figure a full circles, 360 degrees, and uh, it takes us approximately 365 and a quarter days to make a complete trip around that 360 degrees. So what that works out to mathematically is you're moving about a degree per day. Or maybe another way of saying that is the sun changes its apparent position about a degree every day. So that's not a whole lot just from one day to the next, but you start to chunk things up or add a few days or weeks together. And what you'll see is that the sun is rising and setting in different locations. So again, Keep in mind, it's the Earth that's revolving around the sun, but this is just, you know, we're viewers on Earth, and from our perspective, the sun's location to rise and set changes throughout the course of the year. So we've got these birth signs or sun signs or zodiac signs. Um, the reason that they're called sun signs, or when I say that, you know, this is the uh, constellation that the sun is in, um, why couldn't you see that constellation when the sun's in it? Like, for example, in the picture here, if this was Virgo, your birth sign, and the sun is in Virgo, it's daylight, right? So, I mean, that's going to like be like the ultimate source of light pollution. It washes out all the other stars, so you can't see anything but the one star, the sun. So, uh, with that being said, it's a little confusing to some. They would assume and... I get it that like if you were to go out on your birthday and try to find your zodiac sign in the night sky, you'd be disappointed because that zodiac sign or your birth sign, or again, sometimes it's called a sun sign. Um, it's actually going to be what the sun rises into. So if you wanted to see your zodiac sign or your birth sign or your sun sign on your birthday, You'd have to get up just before sunrise, and what you'd see is that when the sun just pops up over the horizon, it would be in, you know, and again, notice I've got in in quotation marks there, because technically it's not in it, but it appears to be rising in it, and uh, that's what your birth sign or your sun sign comes from. So, here's one that perhaps you haven't heard of. Uh, this is Ophicuus. And uh, Ophicuus is the 13th zodiac sign. And uh, so kind of think about it, you know, what we've discussed so far. The Earth makes its way around the sun. Check. Well, we're on Earth, and it looks like the sun's moving in the sky. That's the ecliptic. Check. So uh, if we're going to see the sun rise in different locations throughout the year, and we're saying whatever group of stars it rises into gets its own birth sign, um, there originally was like 12, 
which I guess works out nice with the 12 months of the year. But if, again, by definition, a birth sign or a zodiac sign is what the sun rises into, there was this big chunk of space where the sun would actually rise, or this time of year where the sun would rise into this constellation, or this asterism here, Ophicuus, the serpent handler. And uh, you can see old Ophicuus actually on the right, and uh, what the ancients saw on the left. Uh, looks a little bit like Humpty Dumpty or some crude drawing there on the right. But anyways, that's not what I'm getting at. That takes up a pretty big chunk in the sky. So the sun rises into Ophicuus for a chunk of the year. And I uh, really don't have a good explanation for you as to why the ancients didn't include Ophicuus with it. But in 1930, astronomers redefined those boundaries and put in a 13th zodiac sign sometimes when you check like the newspaper or something for like what your horoscope would be it doesn't include Ophicuus but uh, the astute astronomer does <coughs> so I can see the stars you probably know your sign or do you try this Wait for your birthday, then stay up all night and watch where the sun rises. It will pass in front of one of the 12 constellations of the Zodiac. They say, I'm a Sagittarius. So on my birthday, you might expect the sun to rise in the constellation Sagittarius. And it did, 2,000 years ago, when the Babylonians made all this up. But it doesn't now. In the last 2,000 years, the Earth has wobbled like a top. So now on my birthday, the sun rises in Scorpio, not Sagittarius. So maybe you'd have to be a Capricorn to be a Sagittarius, and Scorpios would have to be Libras. See, astrologers are off one full sign. In 2,000 more years, they'll be off two signs, but they don't seem to care. So in these reflective moments, I ask myself, am I a fun-loving Sagittarius or a sexy Scorpio? You know what? This burned out. Oof. Even more problems afoot. Uh, not only was Ophicuus neglected, but uh, the Earth has a wobble or a procession to it. And that shifted where we see over the 2,000 year window or X amount of year window uh, a larger change. So if you're saying, hey, your sun sign, your birth sign, your zodiac sign is determined by where the sun rises on your birthday, um, well, it's changed. And if you want to nail it down to, okay, well, what would it actually rise into? Uh, here is the list that actually gives you um, an inclusion of Ophicuus. So from December 1st through December 19th, about ballpark, right, a three-week window, the sun rises into Ophicuus. But uh, if you find your birthday on there, it may be a different sign that you thought or then you thought and uh, as Bill had just explained when the Babylonians came up with this zodiac sign for your birth sign um, they were accurate then but time has passed enough time has passed you throw in the inclusion of Ophicuus and a little wobble of the earth and things might be different than what you'd suspected so here we got the band of the Zodiac band, and uh, on the right, I, I've done some crude sketches in some of our reviews here, but uh, it should sort of make sense why you can't see all those stars all throughout the year. Because if I'm on Earth, and there's times when I'm facing the sun, called daytime, right? I can't see any of those other stars that would be like behind the sun. Because the sun's going to be so bright, it just washes all that out. But the Earth rotates, and at nighttime, I can see those stars that are out at night. And I should say, like, out, kind of like in air quotes. But, you know, fast forward to the other side of the sun here, six months later, and the reverse is true. Now you're facing towards the sun, your daytime, and you can't see the stars that you could six months ago. But rotate tonight, and you get a different view of the sky, and different stars are visible. 
So uh, if you thought that the original birth sign was uh, what you had and it changed a little bit, hopefully that explains why. And that's because there's a difference between astronomy and astrology. And sometimes these terms can get used interchangeably and uh, not so much. Uh, they are two totally different things. Um, astrologers use astronomical observations, or, you know, they look to see what's going on in the sky, and they try to make guesses just off of the way that things will unfold from what they're observing. Uh, we can see also that if they're trying to pin your characteristics or your personality off of a certain sun sign, that might not even actually have been accurate anymore. So basically, um, they're, they're trying to just interpret things from what they view. Where astronomy is going to be science-based. Uh, astronomy is the branch of science that studies the universe. And they do that with observation, but also through experimentation and following the scientific method. So by definition, astronomy has got kind of a, a, a general definition. It's just the study of everything outside of the Earth's atmosphere. So there could be people that specialize in tons of branches. But again, if it's an astronomical study, it's going to be following the scientific method and uh, the pursuit of science. Astrology is, um, I'm not trying to poo-poo it or downplay it, but it's a little bit more funsies, kind of more like a Ouija board stuff. Uh, astronomy based in science. So uh, that wraps up really all I wanted to go through with you about Zodiac. Um, perhaps you learned something new. Perhaps it was just some review. But uh, regardless, if you've got questions or concerns or something that pops up, please don't hesitate to reach out. Till we uh, speak again, take care.